Hey everybody, welcome to Bill Sky, the Linux guy, and today we're going to talk about the graphical user interface desktop environment on Linux. Now, arguably, I will get pushback from some people saying that this one's better than that one, and why did you talk about this one? And you know, there are some other ones. You know, all of that is valid, but one thing to remember is don't worry about preferences. Linux is a great operating system. I've even gotten some people push back from me because I used CentOS in my previous video, which was how to set up Linux, specifically a Red Hat type of a Linux, and there's bad things in the community and people get mad. You know, it doesn't matter. You're here to learn an operating system. You're here to learn how to use it, how to manage it, how to be productive with it, and which version you're using is pretty much preference, unless, now let's be fair, unless your company wants a real enterprise level Linux. In my opinion, that's Red Hat Linux uh, that is currently owned by IBM. It has nothing to do with the fact that I retired from IBM. In fact, I don't even like IBM anymore. I don't like it as a company, but it is a really good Linux. It does have support. The other Linuxes like Fedora, um, I guess Mint Linux, the, the, all those other Linuxes, all those really cool Linuxes, Alma Linux, which is what we're going to see today as well, none of those really have support. Now, some of them, arguably, there might be some new thing that comes up where they say, okay, we'll give you support if you pay this amount of money. But that's the thing, is that if you want to get really professional, up-to-date support, where if your server goes down, somebody will actually help you with it on the phone or via the internet or via chat, you're gonna to need to pay for it because they have to pay those people to do that. But if you're just doing it as a hobby, if you're just doing it for education, who cares? Who cares what Linux you're using? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go over really quickly what some of the graphical user interface features are. And then the video after this one will be about the terminal. And oh my God, the terminal. Well, it's not a big deal. You get used to it very, very quickly and it's unbelievably productive. So let's get started. Okay, so what you see right here is Ubuntu. I believe this is Ubuntu 23.10. And this is what we call the GNOME desktop or the GNOME, GNOME graphical user interface. And you can change interfaces on any Linux. Just about any Linux can have just about any kind of a graphical user interface. And there's really three things that I look for when I look for, when I, when I try a new user interface in an operating system. The settings, I wanna find the settings. I want to find the terminal, and I also want to find the software catalog. How can I actually download and install software? Now, this is a Linux that actually, a Ubuntu Linux that actually has a lot of stuff installed on it. Um, I'm running it under VMware. So let's go find those things. So you can see over here, we've got our launch bay or whatever it is you want to talk about. Again, I'm probably going to get pushed back for using that term, but it doesn't matter. But let's go ahead and try some things. I'm just going to click on the show apps. I'm going to go up here to search and I'm going to type software. And you can see that we've got software update here. We also have App Center. And again, these are going to be different on just about any distribution of Linux that you use. So you just kind of have to get used to that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the App Center. And also the App Center is shown here on the dock. I believe that's what it's called, the dock. And from here, you can download anything. You can go up and search for apps. Now, one thing to remember is most of these apps are not supported. Most of them don't cost any money. So a lot of them, I don't want to say most of them, but a lot of them are very, very stable. So no problem. And you can, I don't know, let's do um, SSH. I'm going to just do a search for SSH. And it's actually pretty good. It, it, it gives you a lot of different features. Now, or a lot of different options. Now, what I would do is I would really look around the internet also and find out what other Linux users are suggesting. So that's the software installation. Now, there's another way to do software installation, uh, which we're going to talk about in the next video on Terminal, which I prefer. But every once in a while, I go to this to see, you know, what is available out there in a nice graphical user interface. So that that's the that's the application. Now, another one, and I and I should have said four things, but another one is I'm always looking for software updates. How do I update things? So what I did was I clicked on the apps box and there's software updates. And software updates is an app that basically uses, in, in Ubuntu uses the APT commands to actually download the catalogs, take a look at what needs to be updated, and then it gives you a nice graphical user interface. 
And right here, details of updates. And I know people that will not do it any other way but using this software updater on Ubuntu. That's fine. It's your, it's your preference. Um, I personally like the terminal better. But you can go ahead and turn things off. Like, I don't want to install any of the security updates. And uh, for some reason, it's hanging a little bit there. Not really sure why. Let's go ahead and wait. Okay. So that's another thing. Now, so that was, so we talked about the App Center. We talked about the, we talked about the updates. Now, this is interesting. It says, well, we had a problem. It closed unexpectedly. I always like to say send. And I'll say send. Sometimes it'll come up and say, what were you doing? Um, so it's going to send something to Ubuntu. Now, one of the things that I do, I actually subscribe to Ubuntu 1. So I actually pay for these features. I, I pay to have it uh, supported. I pay to get, you know, whatever Ubuntu wants. I want to give them actual money for their support. And so not a big deal. I think I, I don't remember what I pay. It's not a huge amount of money, but it's a few hundred dollars a year. Okay, so that is the software updater. Now, the other thing I want to look for is I want to look for the desk. I want to look for the terminal. So I'm going to type terminal. And... I have two terminals here, and we're going to talk more about this in the next video, but I've got the default terminal and I've got the terminator, which is kind of a neat terminal. Let's take a look at the terminal, and there's my terminal. Um, I can do, you know, issue commands, sudo. We're going to talk about what all that is, sudo, apt, and update, when we talk about the terminal in following, in following uh, videos. So you can issue just about any type of a command. I can also click on this little plus up here. gives me another gives me another uh, tab. I can drag. Actually, I thought I could drag that. Yeah, I can detach the terminal. So now I can have two terminals. A terminator is kind of neat. If I click on that, I can actually right click on it and I can spl split it vertically. And now I can have two terminals right next to each other. It's really a neat little tool. I don't remember if 23, if Ubuntu 23.1 actually does installs that by default, but it was there. I don't remember installing it, but I could be wrong. So you can switch back and forth. I can even go over here and split this horizontally. So now we have it, even have three terminals. So you're if you're going to become a successful Linux user, a success, successful Linux administrator, you're going to be using the terminal a lot. So that's the terminal. Now, what was, oh, settings. Settings was the other one. Now, this is kind of frustrating is because every Linux has a different term for settings. Sometimes it's called administration. Sometimes it's called settings. On most Debian Linuxes, which Ubuntu is one, it's called settings. And there's settings. So from here, you can do things like the display. I can change the resolution of the display. Um, I can do things with the keyboards, like uh, creating shortcuts. I can go in here and create short. There's all kinds of things you can do here. Uh, you can change the sound information, uh, removable media, what, what you should do if, if something is added to the, or plugged in, what the desktop should look like. Like I can turn off the personal folder there. You notice down here on the bottom right, the personal folder went away. Now the personal folder, folder comes back. So we're going to be talking more about the, the, the set, doing the settings on the Linux because we're going to have to set up servers. We're going to have to set up all kinds of features. But this is the other one. So, so we talked about Application Center, we talked about Terminal, we talked about Updates, and we talked about Settings. So those are all the things that I, that I look for. Now, one thing I want to move for, I, I want to talk about, other than the basics of the user interface, is your home folder. Now, this is a lot like your home folder on Windows. You've got Desktop, which you're looking at in, in the background. You've got Documents, Downloads. You can see I've got, I've got a lot of things here, but these are pretty much all standard. Uh, there's one right here called templates where you can put files in here. So let's say if you always, if you're writing a lot of letters to friends, so you might want to put a template of a file, a writer file in there that you want to actually be able to right click and say, right now there's no, there's no templates in there, but we'll talk about that later. It's, it's really, really useful. Spreadsheets, you can put any type of file in there. I like to also put in program files. In fact, I wonder if I have any here. So let me see. So I'm going to copy this. And I just right-clicked on it and copied it. I'm going to go back to my home. I'm going to go to templates, and I'm just going to paste it. 
And I'm going to rename this to assembly program.asm. So now I'm going to go back to my documents. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new document. And it shows some of the files that were in my templates folder. So now I don't have to start it from scratch for an assembler. You can do this for C, C++, Rust. You can do it for all of them, Java, HTML. So it's really a, it's really a nice feature. Okay, so that's Ubuntu. Now let's take a look. Now that's Ubuntu GNOME. Now let's take a look at another one. I'm going to jump to Alma Linux. And there's Alma Linux. Now I believe Alma Linux is also GNOME. But its user interface is quite a bit different. You've got up here activities. And when you go to activities, now you've got the doc that pops up. And everything kind of, kind of zoomed out, right? So here's the files uh, application. Here's your browser. This is the software. It's not called the App Center anymore. It's called the browser. Uh, here's some help. Oh, terminal is right there. I can also click on show applications. And now this looks a lot like the Ubuntu did. And you can go and search for things. Uh, there's settings. Like I said earlier, most Debian um, have settings. But this one actually is not a Debian. This is actually a Red Hat distribution of Linux. But it's also called settings. So it's different, right? We're going to take a look at another Red Hat. Which, or actually, we're going to take a look at another Debian that doesn't use the word settings. It uses the word administration. So you can see everything there. And, and what's kind of nice also is that this has a, you can go back and forth between screens. So you have multiple virtual screens. And you could do that also on Ubuntu as well. So again, that's the first thing I would look for is I would look for the term, there's the software center, there's the terminal. Uh, you might want to look for settings. There's the settings. Now updates isn't really, let's take a look at utilities here is updates here. I don't really see updates right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to search. I'm going to type update. And it looks like possibly that the software is also updates. Yep. So software is also updates. So it's got one user interface. You can see it's different than the Ubuntu was. Okay, so let's take a look at another one. I would like to look at the XFCE interface of Mint Linux. And again, it's, it's a GNOME interface, but actually this is a XFCE interface. It's not really GNOME. And I'm going to go down here. Now, now this looks more like Windows XP Windows 7, which I actually love. I have a lot of Mint. I use Mint Linux quite a bit. And I'm going to go down here to Applications. And you can see System here. So it's not called Settings. It's called System. And as you go down, you, you may or may not be able to see. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult. Now, oh, there's Settings right there. So I could click on settings. And so the user interface is quite a bit different. So that's XFCE. Let's take a look, take a look at Mint Cinnamon. Here's Mint Cinnamon. Um, again, it looks like a lot, it looks, looks a lot like Mint XFCE, uh, but things are a little bit different. You've got kind of these quick, quick launch over here, right here. This is system settings. So again, you don't have a, a it's not a, like an application tree that you're looking at and and this looks more like the Windows Control Center uh, than the Ubuntu did. So again, each one has a little bit different of a user interface. I'll tell you one thing that I find really interesting is that you can install a Linux with absolutely no GUI. This is Alma Linux version 9.3 with absolutely no GUI. I can log in and that's all she that's all she wrote. Now, whether you know it or not, Windows Server also has this option. In fact, Windows Server, when you first install it or when you begin the installation, it defaults to no user interface because most administrators don't like the headache of a user interface. They just want to be able to issue commands. And I can ls. There's absolutely nothing in my, in my, uh, in my home folder. I'm going to change directory to home. And you can see Linux user. We're going to talk about these commands in future. So let's look at Linux user, and there's absolutely nothing in there. It's just completely empty. Now there are some 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 files, some configuration files, and configurations files start with a period. But you might look at this and say, "Oh my God, what the heck is he showing us this for?" Because using just the command line, you can write your own little scripts. You can install all the code you need. 
You can set up configuration files. You can have as many types, types of server software on here as you want. You don't need a GUI. Now, would I do that if I were you the first time you're, if you're a brand new Linux user? No, I would use a GUI, get used to it with that. But be aware that some companies don't want you to have a GUI on their on their Linux servers. They just don't want to have the headache because it does. It takes up a bunch of memory. It takes up a bunch of disk space, storage space. So they don't want you to have that. So again, it all depends upon what your company wants, wants you to do. Now let's look at the last one I want to talk about, which is the Mate, Mate Linux Mint Mate user interface. And this is my favorite. It just looks a lot like Windows 7. Again, I'm an old timer. Windows 7 was probably the most popular Windows that they ever produced, even more so than Windows 11 now. It just was very easy to go through. And, but it, it, it also has features in it um, that are different than Cinnamon, they're different than XFCE, or different than Ubuntu. So one, now one last thing I do want to talk about is that all of these Linuxes have some type of a file manager. And the file manager is kind of like Finder on the Mac or Explorer on Windows. And with the newest version of GNOME, the file manager is separate from the GNOME GUI. So this is actually an application separate from GNOME, separate from the, from the desktop environment. Now on Windows, I shouldn't say Windows, on Linux Mint, Mint Linux, they may be intertwined. I have never really done that investigation. But on Ubuntu, they really are separate. They've made them separate. So GNOME really doesn't have a file manager per se that allows you to do a lot of the things that you might want to do. So these file managers let you create files. I can look at my home directory. I can look at my downloads. Um, I can also double click on those from within the folder or from within the directory. I can also click on the file system and the file system will show you the root. And we're going to talk about file systems quite a bit in this, in this set of videos. You can look at the root and you can take a look at some of the things within there. Like I can, let's take a look at, uh, what would be an interesting one to look at? ETC. ETC is where all of your configuration files are, are lo located. So now to access these, these special files, you need to have administrative capabilities, which is gonna be on a future video, but it's all there and you can do it all with the user interface or with the, in this case, the files application. Now, what can you do from here? Well, let's say if I want to edit this file, I can right click on it, I can say open with, and I love Genie, and you can bring up your, your uh, Genie editor. Or you can just go ahead and double click on it. It'll say, do you want to run it in a terminal or display it? I'm gonna click on display, and then it loads up the default text editor for that type, and I believe this is either VI or Vim, and we're gonna be talking that, about that as well. So. You can run around with, with different Linuxes. And, and again, it's all preference. It's, either, it's preference if it's a personal thing, but you might be required to do certain things uh, the way your company wants to do them if you become a Linux administrator. So, okay, so before we end this, this video, I did want to quickly go through, because once your Linux boots up, you might say, well, how do I shut it down? Well, there's a number of different ways to shut it down, and they're pretty much all the same. Again, it's something you have to do based on the graphical user interface. On Ubuntu Linux, I'm going to go up here to the top right. I'm going to click on the little power button, and then there's a power button right there. And then I can say power off or reset or, or, or suspend. I could also say log out. So if I had multiple users on the system, you could do that. So you can just go ahead and click power out. And again, every Linux distribution is a little bit different. Uh, let's jump to Linux XFCE. So in Linux XFCE, there's nothing up here on the top right. It's down here on the Linux Mint menu. And over here is the little power button. And it, see, you've got a couple of that extra features. You can do a switch user. Or I can do shutdown there. So everyone is a little different. Let's jump over to Alma Linux. And how would we do it on Alma? Well, Alma looks like it's using GNOME. So you can click on that little power button power off, log out, and you can you can go ahead and power off and log out of here. Now, but what about no graphical user interface? Well, here's Alma with no GUI. I'm just gonna say sudo shut down now. And I don't know if I have to have sudo in there. I think I do, but what this is gonna do is it's gonna say shut down and right now. And what it's gonna do is if anybody else is logged into that Linux, it's gonna tell them the system is shutting down right now. You might wanna say shut down in five minutes. And, but we're gonna talk about that when we talk more about the terminal. 
and it's going to ask me for my password and it's going to shut down the Linux. All right, so that's a quick introduction to the Linux graphical user interface overview. I would really suggest that once you get your Linux installed, once you get it up and running, go ahead and investigate. I, it, the Linux is going to protect you uh, from doing things that might hurt files and stuff like that. Unless you're, you're, you're deleting things in your home folder, then it's completely on you if you delete things. But the thing is, is that learn as many of these different Linux graphical user interface distributions as you can so you can become more marketable. And the next thing you're going to do is the terminal. What is the terminal all about? I believe that's what we're going to do. So hope to see you in our next video.